Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shed. I am Lonnie. Hey, I'm Candace. Welcome back. I had to turn off our light box because it does emit a little bit of heat. Yep. Not a ton, but it probably doesn't help things. Yeah. You know? We're, yeah, it's they're gonna get tired of us talking about heat all the time. That's all we talk about now. That's <laughs> all we feel like every like I got up this morning and walked out here and to the shed and it was it was already like knock you down kind of hot out there, man. But it feels good in here. That yeah, that AC's working yeah. great. Um it is Tuesday morning. We have let's see, we sold an item on Mercari. And then we have um, seven items on eBay. One of them is in storage. It's gonna go UPS, so we're gonna go pick that up later. I think Lonnie's gonna show y'all how he packs that. It's a, nut yeah. it's a nutcracker. Yeah, I'll put myself out there one more it's time. It's not that bad though, because it's in a, it's in a box. It's a it's in a like a a Steinbeck box. I think it's Steinbeck. Yeah. yeah. So it's not gonna be that bad. It's gonna be box in box. Yeah, it's always it's always the person that's not packing that says it's not gonna be that bad. It'll be okay. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> All right, you ready to get started? I'm ready, okay. let's go. Five Echo C11, we sold some cello serving pieces. Five, Five Echo C11. Okay. Oh, one of these things here. This stuff, I just, I prefer to just bring it to Candace and let her do it. So I messed it up one time. Yeah. There we go. Fortunately, the time, that's okay. how many we need. A solid spoon and a slotted spoon. Yep. Okay. Sold that for 15. Ever since the time I, I think it was, I don't know, it was probably six months ago. Remember the. Lady ordered like a one spoon or two spoons or something. And you sent her the whole pack. I sent her the whole bag. I didn't know I was just supposed to take like one or two out. And, I mean, she was so nice. She sent them back. She, yeah, she sent them back. She yeah. didn't even ask for money, I don't oh, no. think. I mean, we did send her. We refunded her some money, but yeah, she's like, no, I'm sending them back. She, you know, she, she didn't ask for us to cover shipping or anything, but we did. Yeah, yeah. She was really nice. Was yeah, we like, got lucky on that. A lot of people would have just kept those, I guess. Well, not, not a lot of people, but some people. Yeah. Okay, the next item is a Monster High, Monster High backpack on 4 Echo. <laughs> it's not a Monster High? No. <laughs> 4 Echo. This thing we have had for for a pretty good while. I thought it was gonna sell. Sorry, y'all. Bad camera work for a minute. All right, here we go. This is it. We've had this for way longer than I thought we would. No, we've had it about yeah about six months. I did think it would sell before now. There's a local like um, flea market. It's 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 a it's an interesting setup they have. They have, you go to this property and they have all these little outbuildings. Like a bunch of sheds and stuff. They don't rent them out. It's just one person running it. I think that what they do is um, pick up garage style remnants, maybe storage auctions or whatever. And I mean, they have so much stuff there. It's a ton. I got that there about six months ago. And so um, we actually drove by there about a week ago and I thought about that backpack and I said, man, I can't believe that backpack hasn't sold. And I told myself, I said, it's going to sell. It's back to school time. And Monster High popularity is on the uptick. I just knew it was going to sell within the next couple of weeks. And sure enough, it sold. All right, we have a hat. We sold a hat. We sold a hat. This is a, uh, a boonie hat. It's right here. Yep. I uh, sold that for 20 That is issue, right? Yeah, it's issue. And uh, it's, de it's ne definitely never worn perfect condition we have a babylon laser cut card on four bravo b13 we don't pull too many cards these days do we i said babylon it's babylon five <laughs> got it let's see b13 and l1 yep okay seven dollars for that okay six dollars and 95 so that was on a some percentage off sale, probably like 12, 13%. I don't know what what it's at right now. Two Foxtrot, we sold some LL Bean duck boots. Two Foxtrots. Yep. Okay. 
they're right here these are pretty nice they are i don't remember buying them i do what if do you, they would have been molly size i would have kept them for what, her. what did we pay for them you remember i don't maybe five bucks yeah we don't we don't like to pay more than five for used shoes typically we don't pay more than five unless it's like just really high-end uh, or we know like oh yeah like some like really nice boots or something yeah. not that these aren't really nice but these aren't the kind of boots where you pay more than five right so we sold those for 43 dollars and 49 cents all righty we sold a bible on three delta it's a bridge builders bible there's a bridge builders bible here this must be it Signed by Rod Parsley. Rod Parsley? Who is that? I think he he did some of the writing in it. Yep, there we go. Rod Parsley. Yeah. Uh, yeah, see, it's like his edition. That does not sound like a real name. I know. <laughs> that sounds like a stage name. He wrote, he wrote some, some like things to complement the Bible. That's a nice Bible. I guess it's for people that build bridges. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And then on Mercari, we saw a uh, 55 piece Mr. Potato Head. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's on One Echo. Man, she's. Watch out, y'all. She's in a weird mood today, I could tell. <laughs> it said One Echo, right? Yep. Yeah. You can tell when Candace gets like that. Just look out. All right. We had it um we had it listed for 55 free ship and somebody sent me an offer for 35 and i couldn't go that low but i was ready i was ready to just move it so i, I offered them 45 and they took it um we paid i think like five dollars where's it going it's going to virginia all right that's not too bad huh i don't know it could <laughs> i don't know this feels it's kind of heavy yeah i know it's a lot of work <laughs> oh boy yeah, that's probably that's probably gonna be like a a five pound five pound ground advantage shipper. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're gonna make money on it. We'll probably we'll, we'll probably still make over twenty dollars on it. Yeah. Profit. I mean, what we're making on Mercari before that is thirty eight dollars and sixty nine cents. I thought I would pop on real quick. I was packing these shoes, and this twelve 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 box is a great size, but I do need to make it a little lower or a lot lower. I'm gonna try my new um, these larger boxes. I like to do use this little guy. Actually, I've never actually used this particular one before. That wheel is a the wheel is a little a little stiff on it because it's new. It doesn't spin. It's already starting to loosen up. Though you can see we have uh the score marks now and then i can just run up like this and we're going to have so much flap that i can cut these top portions of the flaps off And save that for scrap to be used later and then I am gonna go ahead and bag each one of these shoes up individually so they don't get scuffed or anything and then it'll just fold up like this and tape all right got those packed up and while I was packing those we actually made another sale yeah no yep. wonder no wonder you're getting those done so fast they're all the exact same a lot of them are I know <laughs> trying to decide like <clears throat> Generally, t-shirts are not worth much. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of homes, people sell them for like seven free ship and stuff. So I'm thinking about if I can, I'm trying to make lots. I think you should. So but here's the thing. We have like a birthday t-shirt, but I guess I could do this too, because then they could wear it to another dog's birthday party. True. Right? Why not? So I don't know. I'll see if I have enough to kind of match up and make lots. Yeah. And we bought it at the price where could do two for eight plus shipping or something or two yeah, for like nine. the hoodies that's what i did i did uh two for 12 plus shipping yeah. t-shirts will probably be like two for nine or ten plus shipping you know? yeah oh, that's fine yeah. it's pretty much however you whatever you gotta do to move it mm -hmm. you know it's, speaking it's, of that um our lounge fly backpacks two of the styles we have not sold and when i priced them um i did i did 
the most recent solds and I think that these two styles they're just not like hot sellers so I went ahead and lowered the price on both of them and we sold one of them yeah. so the uh, Buzz Lightyear yep this just sold and Macari seems to be really um, pop culture friendly well yeah I was thinking that yeah but also it seems like Macari really wants you to ship fast yeah because they take they they measure it down to the hour they do and they we, nag you they nag you and <laughs> cut the customers we have two i think we sold well we sold like 80 things on Something macari like now that, yeah and we have two like imperfect reviews both of them are for shipping time yeah and i mean one of them we ship the next business day is like what do you want yeah the, the um uh, but that was from the customer though yeah. But Macari shows you like kind of behind the scenes or whatever. They show you like we have a like they're both like four star or three star. Four, yeah. And um so yeah, they they're real sensitive to shipping speed there. So we we could get this out tomorrow, but we're going to go ahead and get it out today. Yeah, why not? Yep, so we ended up selling that one for 43 including shipping. Right. Yeah. So and it's going to Florida. So it'll, it'll either go ground advantage or um or uh what's the other thing priority bonita springs i don't know how far south that is i don't know where yeah bonita springs florida florida the, spreads out a lot <laughs> the yeah because like miami it's a big difference shipping for us shipping like pensacola and shipping to miami right it's like a big difference yeah <laughs> uh the potato head thing right here that ended up shipping for nine dollars and ninety cents by the way yeah and oh let me tell y'all these that's the 12 12 12 12 12 12 12 12 12 both resized a little bit and i love them yeah. uh, so that's that's the dimensions i've been needing um but yeah let me get this guy packed up all right everything's away oh no everything's oh man i forgot i gotta go to storage still yeah we're gonna we're, we're gonna go get that nutcracker we're, after lunch we wanted to tackle this interesting situation that we came upon and we'll, we'll grab some lunch and then go get that nutcracker um this was just this is wild wild so, so i was uh, oh i was actually in the bathtub oh, don't talk about that again no i People was in the bath i want to know about that well no it's just y'all don't take baths or showers i mean would it be worse if i just said i don't take a bath but look anyways <laughs> i was in the bathtub last night you know and i was just you laying know? there relaxing as you do and i was scrolling through facebook and i saw this post in the uh in the group uh, so I was reading this post and this caught my eye big time um, because he Matt who has been watching the channel for years and he's been in the comments and he's in the Facebook group the reseller water cooler link down below if you're interested in doing that uh, he posted this screenshot from his eBay and it's ridiculous right like it's 90 day total almost 5.6 million dollars yeah which that man, that is great clickbait to get somebody to read the rest of what's going on. Right. So you're, you're like, what is this? Yeah. 457 items sold. And of course, questions started flying up. What, what, what do you sell? What's going on? Well, I think a lot of people thought he just screenshot it. Yeah. And I, he probably wishes he did too. Yeah. Uh, can anyone beat my 90 day? And so um, down below, he explains what happened. So what, what happened, Candace? All right, he said, I need to share this. I, I sold a piece of audio gear for $2,400 to someone in Australia, and it was part of the eBay International Shipping Program. However, apparently there's a limit to the price to what is allowed in the program, the EIS. Yep. So the buyer couldn't pay because I needed to invoice him with an estimate for shipping. So there's a limit on the amount that can be shipped through eBay International System, so they shipping. So they told him that he needed to take care of it himself. But here's the thing. Okay, so I did. Uh, I just wanted to interrupt real quick because I did pull up the eBay International Shipping page where it talks about uh, the requirements for items shipped through EIS and physically located in the U.S. Check items are eligible for export. Mm, check, I think. And the cost doesn't exceed twenty five hundred. Now the thing that Matt's talking about is less than twenty five hundred. But what I don't know, 
um, is that 2500 is that the item plus the shipping or is that just the item or like what does that include vat yeah right does that include the vat if there's anything like like i don't know yeah um he mentions that that was the issue though yeah so but i did want to cover like a few other things that i think could also be influencing what's going on because packages should not exceed 44 pounds billable weight for every country except Canada. Maximum billable weight for Canada is 66. You can go heavier there. And then they give um, the dimensional. The dimensions, right? Of yeah. the max dimensions. Now you have to fall, you have to come in under both of these. We've actually run into this ourselves before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the uh, billable weight thing with a, a bulk order of nutcracker somebody wanted to do. So 44 pounds billable weight. And what is billable weight? Um, whenever you're talking about a package with UPS, there is just the the standard weight. Like if you have a 12, 12, 12 box, not over a cubic foot, you weigh it and then it comes up with a price, right? But if your box is larger than 12, 12, 12, um, it may, a dimensional weight may apply. So they, I pulled this up from UPS if your dimensional weight is higher than the actual weight then your billable weight is now the dimensional weight okay so billable weight is basically dimensional weight unless dimensional weight is less than the actual weight and then the actual weight would be the billable weight and don't they have a calculator on their page they did well yeah. the, the, this this says how to do it. Yeah. Uh, multiply. You multiply length with height, and then you divide by the divisor to calculate the dimensional weight in pounds. The divisor varies by rate type. One thirty nine for daily rates. One sixty six for retail rates. I think since we're using commercial rates, I think that's what daily rates means. Yeah. But I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not 100% on that. Uh, I think daily rates is, is what we pay on eBay or pirate ship if you buy your postage there. So um, length width, length times width times height divided by 139, then you get your billable weight. And I think in this case, well, in this case... Um, if we were going on a read... Yeah, go ahead and read some more. I'm it, sorry. Yeah, it says, Needless to say, I was less than excited to come up with a shipping estimate to Australia for an item that was 22 by 22 by 14 and over 50 pounds. Okay, so it was over 50 pounds. So right there, he's saying the billable weight is over 44 pounds. Mm -hmm. So so even if it does that item doesn't uh, qualify for the value, it doesn't qualify for the, for the weight. Right. For the so, billable weight. So it sounds like that's where the issue was with him having to ship on his own. One of those two or both. Yep. So, and then he goes on to say, my, my, my main point here is that eBay should not allow the EIS program to be enabled on an item when that certain value threshold has yep. been met. I had to call support to find out the answers. Just something to keep in mind and maybe share with others. That's what we're doing right here. Oh, and the reason my 90-day 90 yeah. total, <laughs> 90 total is $5 million. The buyer wasn't responding to my messages, so I sent him an invoice for $5 million in shipping. That, so, that's how you get to my attention. So, so that was, so, I mean, we, uh, obviously that was a silly thing for Matt to do, and it, like, it didn't work out. I've done silly things like that. Go ahead, I'll look, continue reading. It didn't work out because, um... Uh, his account got flagged, and so are his payments. So now he can't ship via FedEx or UPS. He's getting errors, like when he's trying to ship through eBay, and he has more stuff he needs to ship. Yeah, so they like they kind of froze his payments. They won't let him ship out. His account is pretty much frozen, sounds like. And then what's he say at the end? Uh, I have more stuff I need to ship. Your boy, Matt Jackson. Yeah, that, Okay, I wanted to make you say that because he always says that every <laughs> he time. He always says your boy. So, but here's the thing too. And, and like, I, I'm just like, I'm just making all aware of this. I don't know the answers to this. But in my experience, things don't show up on your... Yeah, why is a shipping invoice showing up on his 90 yeah term. my experience it wasn't even paid my experience numbers don't show up there until they get paid yeah 
But this is a word to the wise uh, from, from here on out. Don't play around with that. Yeah. Because that's what happened. Matt, like all the other stuff, like the shipping to Australia, that's, it's whatever, right? Like ultimately that, that thing is valuable, it's desirable. I think it's some kind of Macintosh amp. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But he could he could probably sell it anywhere. He could probably sell it in, the, like if he canceled that, realistically, he could probably just sell it in the U.S. if he had to. That's not the big issue. For him now, I think the big issue is this flagged account thing that he's that he's unwit unwittingly yeah. caused. Yeah. So I don't know how that's going to end. Right. But he he was just playing around, probably a little f frustrated. Fine, five million. That's what it'll cost yeah, you. Yeah, I mean he. I think he was probably frustrated. He couldn't get a response from the buyer. And keep in mind, they are in Australia, so they may have been. I don't know how long he gave them the response. But yeah, isn't that a mess? What yeah. a mess! What a friggin' mess! Yeah. So be aware of your large items. There's a good chance you can't ship them through the internet. But but he's right though. Although here there, there's a couple of things I don't know still. I don't know about that value thing. If that was really the the issue. Also, I don't know, in Matt's case, I guess I could ask, um, what did he have in the listing for the dimensions? Right. Did he actually have those dimensions and weight in the listing? Or did he have less, not thinking of it? Or did he have flat rate? Or what? Did he have the proper dimensions that he put there in the original listing? Yeah. Because if he had less than that, then maybe it could have squeaked through. Although we've had things end up on eBay International Shipping ourselves, razors, uh, that they later on, they allowed them into the program and later on we got a nasty message saying it had been removed. And we, like that was all supposed to be automatic. So just something to look out for. I, I mean, I, I did reach out to Matt before we started talking about this to get permission. So thank you, Matt. Anyone have any insight on this or had like similar situation where you listed something and it got into the EIS program and it shouldn't have, and then you have problems with that afterwards. So, and Matt, if you can update us on this situation uh, in the Facebook group, I'm I'm really curious. I'm I'm hope hope everything works out well for you and quickly. Yeah. Because I, I what a mess. I know it's just a big mess. Yeah. And he probably feels bad now too because. He caused a lot of it but by doing the five the silly five million dollar thing. I wouldn't have thought that would cause that either though. Yeah, I would have just thought it was a joke. That blows my mind that it got added to his total art. Right. I don't know what's up with that. Now, now they think he's like a member of a drug cartel trying to like launder money or something, probably right. who knows? Yeah. And look, that's how you end up that's how you end up with comps on eBay for beanie babies for <laughs> <laughs> for five hundred thousand dollars, right? With sure. stuff like that. Yeah. So, best of luck to you, Matt. Thanks for letting us share the story. Hope it works out. Yeah. All right. Before I go, because we're both, we decided we're both gonna go. Because yeah. you're all you're. I'm gonna need some more dog items by tomorrow. Or by today, maybe even. Maybe huh? yeah, we'll see. Um. So, so there's no use in making two trips to storage. Right. So. We need another spot because we did clear this all out, but now this is full. We get we we can't put anything else up here. Right. So Candace had the idea. Like this is poor utilization right here of a high shelf. This stuff down here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move this stuff to other locations. This box, we're gonna shove all the way over and then we can put another banner to right here of dog stuff. That's that's kind of our plan. So right now, Candace has got on her computer, she's got four alpha location pulled up. Yep, custom label SKU, four alpha, and shows all the items up there. Yeah, allegedly. so, yep. So <laughs> I'm gonna pull items down and then move them and I'll just show one or two and then we'll uh we'll make some room. So this is basically how we do it. So we we've done this before too. 
it actually works well it's really nice having somebody to work with in here yeah now, if i was by myself doing this it would be a pain be back and forth, yeah. yeah i've got some car mats here Okay, I'm gonna move those to seven Bravo. And then, so Candace just has to. It's real simple. Yep. You, there's a little pencil here. You don't even have to go into the listing, just change it right there. Yep, seven Bravo, submit, and boom. There it is. There it is. And then we just keep, keep doing that with each of those items until we get, get it cleared off. All right, we've been shifting stuff all around, moving stuff, went to storage, and we did get a cracker. Yep, go ahead, cracker packer. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the cracker packer. That and, box is horrible. Yeah, this so. this box, we did not advertise as having it. Right. It's not in the photos, and it's it's so just, it's so nasty. Like, Candace, just, you see it have water damage and stuff. Yep. And, and the only reason Candace had this in here is just to protect the cracker. Yep. And um, this is his whale. Okay, that's. He's really only two parts: the whale and that, and the, you know his main okay. body here. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Wow, you really wrapped him up pretty good there. The, the, that, the people I got him from had him in this, so I just put him back in it. Okay. You know. Cool. Yeah, this is going to be pretty easy pretty pretty simple pack here all right let's get the i got y'all strapped on let's get the let's get the pack and a cracker here one two three four five so first thing i'm going to do i already have some bubble on the cracker i'm going to put more because this is going this way. This bubble I'm going to go this way with. And the America Bubble Boy Large Bubble. Link down below. That is my secret weapon for packing crackers. And this is also when I'll use my old cheap no-name two-inch tape. It's for doing stuff like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get the cracker nice and bubbled. Okay, he's good like that. And then I'm also going to take, we've got a whale here that fits onto one of his hands. Or is one of his hands, sort of. I'm going to put this back in here and then I'm going to grab a couple more big bubbles to wrap it in. And then we can get actually started with the pack. And I've already got my boxes picked out. I'll just set these off to the side for now. And like I said, I've already got the boxes picked out. I'm going to use two smalls. I would use extra smalls if I had them, but I don't. So what I'm going to do on each one of these, I'll just show you on one of them because it's repetitive. Is I'm going to cut... Yeah, that one's really not sharp. I'm going to cut one of these side flaps mm -hmm. off of each one. Like this. And I'm going to hold on to those because they are useful. And then on each one of these, I'm just going to go ahead and build it out like this. Switch to the three inch tape now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and build these two sides out real quick. And I'm gonna grab the cracker real quick and then I have these two sides now, or these two halves, part in the middle, busted out, 
and I think that's probably a good size right about there. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to reuse these in here. Provide a little bit more protection down there and then uh, probably use this one on top. And this is why I was happy to find a bunch of cheap packing paper at a garage sale the other day because now I'm going to make a bed in the box like this. And now I have a bed here. And what I'll do sometimes, like, if I, if I feel it and I'm like, ah, that doesn't give quite enough support, then I'll take another piece. I'll kind of loosely crumple it like that. And then I'll slide all of them back and insert another piece. And that'll make them all just a little bit stiffer, right? So now we have what I consider to be a pretty nice bed there to rest the cracker on, like that. I position them a little further down like that. This is one of the larger crackers we're selling. Uh, this guy's 19 inches tall. Most of the big ones are like 15, 16. So this is a, a little different pack that I'm used to. And then I'll take his whale, I'll put it up here by his head. And then after I do that, Now I'm going to put paper around the sides. For support. And do I use a lot of paper for these? I do. I use a lot of paper. But that was one of the things I learned Through a lot of painful trial and error is one of the worst things you can do as a reseller is skimp on packing supplies or packing materials you know and this is why i don't really like I'm sure i don't open the box up. this is why i don't really like selling things that are large unless they're pretty valuable because i want to be willing to put the money into the packing materials you know if something's cheap you're gonna feel you're gonna try and cut corners everywhere you can i'm gonna go ahead and fill in the top now okay so we have the paper we have an adequate amount of paper there and i'm gonna top that all off with that other piece of flap and at this point the inside box the one that's fitting in the other one I'll go ahead and secure it because that's the easier one. Use a couple of little locking pieces just to free up, free up my hands. There we go. And then I can come in and actually tape everything up. That's a sloppy piece there. Right, and then this is the part that's a little, usually a little trickier because this box has to fit around this other box. So it requires a little bit of, a little bit of pulling really as tight as you can. And then just doing the best you can to kind of lock it down. Then get one here. That uh, should be good. There's a lot of tension right there until you get it locked down. And then I'm just going to continue on to tape this box up. All right, and this is ready to roll. I've, I've got it all taped up put plenty of pieces of tape going like that way because one thing I don't want to happen like the the only thing you don't want to happen here is you don't want the boxes coming apart 
Um, so I tape up this seam really well to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, the only, like if I had to give a self critique on this pack, the only thing I regret on this one is um, it's too big. It's, it's a little bigger than it needs to be. If I had this to do over again, I would have used extra smalls instead of smalls. And it could probably be sized to about here. The way I pack this is probably going to cost me an extra five to six dollars um, in shipping over and above what the customer paid. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this pack. I'm very happy with how secure it is. Like I'm shaking it, no, zero movement whatsoever. And I'm happy with the strength of it. This is a, what is this? A, this is like a $270 nutcracker, right? Mm -hmm. So. I mean, most of our nutcrackers are worth a lot less than this. And uh, I do not pack everything equal. When something's over $200, I'm going to go above and beyond <laughs> on the pack for sure. So there, that's how I pack a loose cracker. Okay, I got kind of lucky here um, because it's only going to Missouri, which is fairly close. The dimensions that were put into the listing were seven pounds, 7 21 12 10 actual dimensions are eight pounds 29 12 12 <laughs> way bigger but like i said i could have I, I i definitely should have packed that smaller so that's on me but uh it, it still works out because if we go to so um, i'm actually buying the postage on pirate ship and this is you see 29 12 12 eight pounds and um it's 1976 to ship so it, it's about an extra five dollars i'm cool with that if this would have been going to california uh i would have probably hurt myself a little bit so yeah go ahead and get this printed and this video has been going on a little bit for today we're going to continue to work we will see y'all again in the morning bye good morning everyone it is <laughs> What is it? Wednesday. It's it Wednesday. Wednesday. It's yeah. harder to keep track of days with this new filming style. Yeah, it is. Um, that's kind of one reason why we went back to saying what day it was, just to kind of help keep us on track. Yeah. So sorry if that annoys you. I gotta remember it's day two of the video, right? Yes, here. day two. This is Wednesday. Um, we pulled some orders yesterday, and we um we had to go to storage and get pick up a couple of nutcrackers um because one sold, but late yesterday afternoon so that's going out today but then we sold something else in storage last night so you're gonna have to go back and get that i'll be going back yeah that's fine <laughs> um oh another thing i wanted to mention a lot of y'all asked um we have a canon m50 m50 camera that we've been shooting with for well i actually looked and i bought it you bought it in 2020 right but that that really nice lens we have on it you i think we got that in 2021 after i came into the shed right so that was like the game changer for that camera for us yeah, yeah but we we've had that camera over three years and it broke a while back and uh it's just been sitting around for how for how long about a month or something yeah, a month or so yeah so it, it, it just won't power up at all it just went when candace was using it, it just boom it died so um anyways i finally um i finally decided to go ahead and send it to canon see what they say it doesn't cost me anything so far um until i guess they give me an estimate or something so i have that that's one thing we have going out today as our camera it's going off to uh canon repair what's the name of it going off to canon factory service center so Hope, hopefully we'll get some good news about that pretty soon i'm hoping Maybe like it's just like a little loose wire or something i don't know but i hope i hope yeah, i hope it's things. fairly affordable yeah yeah hey if it's under 200 dollars, i'm gonna do it oh yeah it'd be worth so, it it's a great camera yeah until it broke yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was a great camera but we have um uh, we have some orders to pull you want to go ahead and get the cracker first yeah we can do that um so we sold a da -da -da -da, a Irish Santa. Yeah, we actually, like Candace said, we got him yesterday. I just threw it up here. 
He's a, a 16 inch. We sold him for 150. Yeah, and this is getting shipped with the box, I believe, because this box is in good condition. Yeah, this box is in great condition. And it's, yeah, it's his original box. Um, that's really important. That, I don't know if y'all remember that website I showed y'all where you can get re repairs or replacement parts. They sell boxes, too. Mm. So, I don't know if they just get old boxes and take the stickers off or what. All right, we have a Walmart pen, 283. Shoot, we haven't sold a Walmart pen. It's been a little while. It's been a long time. Although I think um, we did have some viewers tell us about the um, the shareholders meeting that happens every year, and I think that already happened. Yeah, I think that was like in May or June. And I think that was the driver. No, I thought it was July. Well, and it, I think that was the driver for. Uh, we had a bump in sales on those. We we had a we had one month recently where like it was Walmart pins every day and we were selling they would sell on three different platforms yep. pretty yep. pretty steady but uh yeah we sold that one let me oh wait i gotta check and make sure which one let's see this is um safety first walmart safety first yeah big smiley face okay all right one echo uh samsonite train case just like lonnie just listened to this yesterday yep just listed it and this one was in pretty i don't remember getting it i really found it i know i don't remember where or how much we just got it just like two weeks ago yeah mm. uh it's in good condition it has the mirrors good um some cosmetic stuff going on but um yeah it works well like the clasp it had like you see some some of the chrome plating is missing there but overall it's good the main Mirror. part is it has the key and the tray. Very rare to find both of those. Not very rare, but it's a, it's unusual to find both of those uh, pieces. And a lot of times the trays are cracked. So yeah, that was a good little find. Sold that for $32. And we have an 11 inch nutcracker. Five Charlie Dash L is a toy soldier. I don't know what I didn't look at the picture, so I'm not. He's there's a couple a, over there. Yeah, he's got on a white shirt. Let me see. I thought he did. Let me go pull up his picture. Oh wait, he's right here in front of me. That's him. Yeah. Okay. He'll just go ground advantage. Yeah, he's got the little key that goes in his back. It's separate. Oh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So he sold really cool. for $52.79. Okay. Uh, we have a card on one Bravo S109. Yeah, I had a... Got an offer on this card last night and decided to go ahead and take it. I hope I actually have the card. I didn't actually verify. Yeah, it's right here. I got it. Jose Fernandez, um, Blue Refactor number 29. Yep, that's PSA it. PSA 8. PSA 8, yep. $20 for that. 20 bucks plus shipping for that. All right, we sold a dog jacket. It's in the D box. Oh boy. <laughs> a, B, C, D. All right. All right, there's 12 large, and there's only one in there, so we're good. Yep. Black and gray. Jump. Ten bucks. Yes, ten dollars for that. Okay, let me put this box back. On Et on Etsy, we sold a um, Boy Scout belt buckle for the Philmont Ranch. It's in the small drawer. Yep, this little guy right here. It's interesting. They messaged us to see if if we thought it was durable enough for everyday wear. So they're planning on wearing this sucker. Yeah, it definitely is. I don't, I don't know. Maybe those welds didn't look good to them or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's strong though. We both pulled on it. Um, we sold that for it's about fifteen dollars, wasn't it? Plus yeah. shipping, some somewhere in there. Seventeen plus ship. Okay. And then the last item is that um gigantic twenty-four inch squishmallow, the um Heather the Dragonfly. That's the thing I got to go pick yeah, up. Yeah, that's in storage. So we sold that for sixty dollars. Yep. Do you remember what you paid for that? The garage sale? 
five bucks oh that was a good flip then yeah yeah i have to go out and uh, pick that up in a bit after i get this stuff all packed which is fine because uh it is ups so there's no hurry but i will go ahead and get this done okay got all that stuff packed and this was actually um this nutcracker came out really good i should have filmed packing this because all of my lines were perfect and everything just worked out perfect and it's really strong this is um it was like 14 14 something it's headed to dallas texas all right definitely looking forward to getting that camera back fingers crossed i hope it's i hope it's not too expensive of a repair but i want to show you all this it's not a great photo or anything but i think i still think it looks cool on the mannequin isn't that awesome how the chin strap goes down and something i noticed these are these are called steel pots and to my knowledge i don't know so somebody somebody correct me out there if y'all know but to my knowledge they use this same exact helmet for I, when i got when i joined in 1990 what was it 92 no i joined i enlisted 91 actually went to basic and stuff in 92 um like we had this i think i remember wearing these at first i don't think we had the kevlar when i first got in i might be wrong and it might might we might have just been using some old gear old training gear or something but uh anyways most people i see listing these just about all of them say world war ii they see these helmets and they're like oh that's a world war ii helmet but i didn't call mine that because i don't think it is based on i want to show you all this this is something when i was buying from kevin and danielle kevin told me this and it's come in very handy when dealing with this military stuff i've used it over and over and i don't know when this these date codes started but most most somewhat modern i don't even know i would say sometime in the probably early 70s or maybe late 60s they started using this type of um nomenclature is that is that the word but you see they have like it says what it is and they always say it backwards with commas kind of like yoda speak liner helmet ground troop type one you know like it's, it's kind of backwards but um you see this dsa number it says dsa 100 and then it has a dash every time after that dash that is going to be your date code and mine on this helmet liner is 1976 so they, and that that is useful on pretty much pretty much anything military issue so it's been pretty like even like hats pants blouses everything has these date codes so that was a little tip i got from um kevin that has really worked out all right it is later in the afternoon and we didn't film a lot today i filmed i looked at the footage yesterday and i saw i filmed a bunch i'm like well we better not make this thing too long yeah like, sometimes we don't realize how long we're making them uh, right so i'm having to check because i know i know we we royal we can get long-winded sometimes yeah we do <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah a pretty pretty decent listing day for me i've been listing a bunch of uh i've got like a box full of smalls i've been kind of working through here and got a few stragglers but been listing a lot of little knickknacks like uh these are kind of cool these old Rao partha colonials figures listed those for like 20 a pack I had like five of those oh some nsync stickers those aren't that great so we did have some uh these grateful dead window stickers i listed a lot of those those are cool a lot meaning one lot not like a lot exactly yeah a lot of seven i should yeah. say but th these are really kind of neat those are from 1985 yeah so yeah those are fun but uh yeah date in your title or anywhere no you put vintage yeah just put vintage they can look at them if they want i listed some dog clothes today wow <laughs> i did get up there and kind of reorganize our system i went to using I, i'm gonna keep this stuff in the totes but the stuff above is going into smaller boxes to make it easier to manage yep and so. and we wanted to be able to just use a piece of tape to close the top down because we had some that were in bins 
or buckets or whatever the heck oh, you want to call open them. On top. They were open on top and the didn't want like uh, dust and stuff like that falling into the bag. So we wanted to make sure they were all, everything was covered up. Yeah. So we have, yeah, we have that. We still have open space here. We did go through and um, move stuff around, brought stuff to storage yesterday. Um, we are always doing this, like we're, this is some that's, bunch of that's stuff. That's a donate box. That's a donate box. That's, some of that stuff was listed and uh, I gave up on some of it. So that's yeah. gonna go to Goodwill and yeah. So pretty good day today. Pretty, pretty chill, relaxing day here in the shed. But thanks a bunch for watching. We'll see y'all again very soon. Bye, y'all. Bye.